Hello and welcome to Tall Guy Films. Today we're making a BuzzFeed style logo. Alright, so if you don't know what I mean by a BuzzFeed style logo or intro, I mean something like this. So if you want to make something like that, this video will show you how to do it. So I did an effect like this for my one of my school's videos, uh, which I'll put a link to somewhere up here so you can watch that, but I decided to show you guys how to do it, and it's actually a pretty simple effect. It is pretty time consuming, uh, but it's pretty simple, and I'll be doing this in After Effects since After Effects is a pretty common software for motion graphics and doing stuff like this, but let's go ahead and jump right in and I will show you guys how I did this and how you can do it too. Alright, so we're here inside After Effects, and I actually have a two monitor set up as you can see. So I'll be switching back and forth between these two monitors. Hopefully that isn't too confusing and my uh, layout of the workspace isn't too different from what it is normally, so hopefully you guys will be able to follow along. But uh, anyway, here's what the composition looks like when it's finished. So it's nothing too complicated. As you can see, it's a different name, but that won't be too big of an issue. This, is, this name is actually longer than just BuzzFeed, so it'll actually be more work to do, but if you just want it to say BuzzFeed, then you will still be able to do that with this tutorial. Alright, so let's first flow in and just make a new composition, obviously. Settings don't really matter, set it to whatever you want. Uh, but then, we're going to go in and you're going to want to make a solid, a red solid. Um, I actually already have one made, uh, but basically all you have to do is just make a red solid. And if you want, actually, it's actually a pretty good idea. Uh, what you want to do is you want to download uh, BuzzFeed video that uses the logo. And I've already done that, but you can do that. And uh, well, you're going to want to take that video and you're going to put that behind this. Uh, so go ahead and do that. All right, so I just kidnapped this video and it's 720p, so I'm actually going to scale it up really quickly. Um, but as you can see, it's right there. So let's just, you're going to want to go to the point where the BuzzFeed logo starts. So that would be right, right there. And I'm just going to split the layer. Boom. Boom. All right. So now if we just zoom in here, and you can actually see the monitor right now, but I sure will get there eventually. Sure, you that we'll get there eventually. Um, but now, what we're gonna want to do is if we go over to that, I'm gonna apply a 50% opacity to the red solid layer, so we can see underneath it and see what we're doing. And I'm actually gonna do is apply an RG corner pin. And the RG corner pin is a red giant plugin. It's not free, I believe. I don't think it's free. It could be free. It might be one of their free plugins, but I don't think it is. Anyway, the reason I'm going to apply that is because we're going to be using the corner pin to basically do the animations. And the reason is that the corner pinning, when you're using a solid, it's more precise than working with just a normal uh, mat. And the reason I'm using the RG corner pin over the normal corner pin is that it has a built-in um, motion blur tool. The default corner pin in After Effects you can use. It comes with After Effects and it's free. Um, but it doesn't have motion blur built in, so you actually have to do a CC motion blur, which I'll talk about that when we get to that point. But it's actually kind of... It gave me weird resorts when I used it. It might work fine for you, but I found that just using the RG corner pin is more reliable. So basically, what you're just going to do is you're just going to zoom in on the footage. And we'll go... So basically, all you're going to do is you're going to keyframe your, um, your solid to match this frame by frame. So we're going to start out, it's going to be invisible, and then it's going to be about that size, then about that size. So one of the most important things to get with this is the motion blur settings. So when I did this, uh, I wasn't exactly the same, but I chose to do this separately, and then I did a shutter angle of 180, 
and I found that was pretty close. It wasn't perfect, but it was pretty close. And just doing that got the motion blur pretty spot on. And then you can set these settings, or these, um, these four corner points. Or no, those aren't the corner points. Hang on a second. They're hidden in a weird... There we go. In the two pins, <laughs> you set these four points to the points on the... to match it up with here. Um, so, for right here... Uh, and the one thing that's pretty annoying is that the RG corner pin is actually pretty laggy um, compared to the default. So... And it takes some it takes some practice or just some trial and error to get the point directly on. But once you do, it gets going pretty fast. But anyway, I'm not gonna make you sit through all this, I guess rotoscoping you could call it. So I'm gonna jump ahead. But again, basically all you do is you just match the four points here as it animates out like that. And then once we get to about right here, is where I'll jump back in and show you guys what to do next. Alright, so here we are. I finished my um, box, I guess you could call it, first box. As you can see, I actually chose to make mine really big. And I chose to do that to make it more visible because the project that I was doing for, doing this for, I wanted more visibility on it because of the viewing situation it would be viewed on. But as you can see, it's not perfectly the same as the BuzzFeed logo itself, but it's pretty darn close. It's definitely not close, or it's definitely close enough that you wouldn't notice the difference if you weren't, you know, looking at it frame by frame. Uh, and you certainly if you spent more time on it, you would get closer. Now when you get to this point, if you chose to use just the default corner pin that comes with um, After Effects, you would want to find a CC Oh dear, what is it called? I thought it was CC Motion Blur, or it was CC Force. There we go, CC Force Motion Blur. And you'd apply that to your footage, and then you just do override shutter angle, shutter angle of 180, um, and then that would, should apply uh, normal motion blur to just the default After Effects corner pin effect, but again, I chose to use the RG corner pin because it has a motion blur tool built in. Uh, but if you don't have RG Motion Blur, then that's something you can use. So now that we've got this initial box, the next thing we need to get is, as you can see, this little piece that kind of... this little piece that sticks out right here, as you can see. Uh, so again, this is super easy. Uh, it's actually easier than this because it's just one motion. But again, you do you're just going to want to add a new red solid or just duplicate the solid that you have and then you're going to do the same thing you're going to use the RG corner pin you're going to scale it down and then you're going to match it to this piece right here as it animates and again RG force or RG uh, corner pin with the more motion blur or you can do just the normal corner pin with the CC force motion blur but anyway let, I'll jump in again once I have that done Alright, so as you can see, I now have the little hanger thingy, which, again, super easy. No problem making that whatsoever. So now the next thing we need to do is we could either do the text next or the sign next. I'm actually going to do the sign next because the sign looks pretty difficult. It looks like you're going to need to do a full 3D simulation here, but you can actually, because this 3D movement is on a 2D plane basically, you can actually take this and you can actually do this with the corner pin effect. Uh, so let me show you how to do it. Now I actually have a pre-comp here. I took went ahead and took um, all of the, I guess you can actually see my pre-comp. I took all three of the components from the sign and I put them into a pre-comp. Now within this pre-comp, I have another pre-comp called the sign. Now, if you look at the pre-comp, the sign, as you see, it's literally just that sign that you see on the, well, just hang, coming down and hanging. And so what I actually did is if we go into the logo um, and look at what I did, you can see that I just, all I did was I applied an 
RG corner pin again we've got our motion blur 180 but the pins you can see I simulated them so that if we look at the final product it looks like it's swinging in 3D but it's actually just the pins are distorting it in a way that it looks like it's swinging in 3D and again for this all you have to do is just take the um, this footage just take this footage and just match your footage to this footage so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put that pre comp together and then we can dive in and take a look at the text alright so if we look here you can see I've got the a big chunk of the logo done already and again I'm I'm skipping through a lot of the actual work but actually doing this is obviously uh, quite a bit more difficult and time-consuming but I'm just skipping over it for the sake of saving time again I'm assuming if you're doing this that you already have some experience in After Effects uh, but again as you can see I have that now one thing to point out is the font that I use for this is a font called Proxima Nova semi bold it's available for free online I it used to be available for Google fonts although the last time I looked I couldn't find it anyway it's not exactly the same font that BuzzFeed uses but it's pretty close uh, so that's the font that I used for doing this but anyway so for the text the text is again probably the most time-consuming part so I'm actually gonna jump over to one of the comps that I already did that I already finished just to show you because again I'm not gonna do everything for you so this is one of the comps that I finished and as you can see the text just pops up like that again I did the exact same thing that I did for all of the other um, all of the other pieces of this logo I literally just took the um, the BuzzFeed logo from an actual BuzzFeed video and just copied it frame for frame so with this the text it's actually time consuming because I chose to animate each of the letters individually you could do this with a script but for the sake of simplicity I'm just gonna do it by hand um, but all you have to do is you have to get the motion of the first letter and then you can copy that motion to all the other letters so the way I did this is if we go in here um, I actually took each letter I matched it and then I copied that letter changed the actual letter changed its Y position and then changed how it was situated in time so that it made this effect and then uh, as you can see I pre comped that uh, just because I didn't want all of the different letters showing up on my composition just to save space and be more organized but then what I did on here is as you can see I applied a mask so that when the letters come up it looks like they're coming up kind of on the logo itself uh, so the the letters aren't appearing below the logo they're only on the logo and applying the mask through a pre-comp was easier so that was another reason that I did a pre-comp uh, but anyway that's not super difficult and the last part which is just um, if we look at the actual video which is just applying this kind of title uh, most of the best feed videos have some variation of the title uh, but the if you want a title like this literally all you have to do is do a uh, a solid color solid uh, do a corner pin or a mask if you want to make it this shape then lower the opacity to give it kind of that transparency and then just put your text on it super easy and then this one they actually kind of blended together uh, but one I copied if I can oh make it fit all right the one one I did that was kind of like that the stuff actually kind of shot up like that so literally all I did for that was I pre-comped the text and the uh, color together and then I just animated them and added motion blur excuse me and that was it so it's it's not super hard to do uh, again it's just time consuming but the actual animation especially when you're just copying frame by frame for another video it's super easy to do if you have any experience with After Effects it's just time consuming 
Uh, but anyway, that's the way I did it. I'm sure there's other ways to do it, especially like animating the text. I'm sure there's ways to script that. That would be faster. Um, but that's how I did it, and I think that's a pretty easy and efficient way to do it. Uh, but that is it pretty much, I guess, for this video. Hopefully you learned something from it. Hopefully you can create a BuzzFeed style logo now for your own videos or whatever you want to use it for. Do you use this responsibly because, you know, I don't want to be blamed for your copyright infringement. I'm not responsible for how you use this knowledge. Uh, but that is it for this video. If you like the video, hit the like button. If not, feel free to hit the dislike button. If you have any more questions, feel free to leave a comment. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe.